All right, guys, uh, we'll jump on here. Uh, my name is Heinz Navnit. I am a Chief Development Officer here at Sancon Commissioning. Uh, we're going to talk today about early works. And early works is actually the process that we have proven success in cutting project execution costs by 4 to 5 percent. Um, so just a quick little intro about myself. Uh, been with the company since 2010. Uh, Sancon Commissioning been in service since 2006. Uh, premier commissioning startup service company servicing the entire North Americas. Uh, today, a little bit of the agenda. If we want to switch to the agenda slide there quickly, Pete. Uh, so what we're going to cover here, what is early works? and that is a term trademarked by Sancon. Um, how we use early works to reduce cost, uh, how early works is integrated into the project schedule, and then we'll uh, open the floor to any questions that we might have. So uh, next slide, Pete, if you will. Awesome. So in uh, the next 15 to 30 minutes here, a little bit what we're going to talk about is the insights of 400 plus projects that we've collected data from. And what we've essentially done here is we've taken 21 key clients and key projects. So of these 21 projects, we have 68,000 man hours. Uh, we took out of that approximately 5,800 hours, so 8.5% of those projects. And we were able to move those to the front end. So essentially sliding our schedule to the left. And uh, when we look at that, the percentage of that early works, that pre-com work that we're looking at is 19,000 hours, 28% of the projects, which are pre-system turnovers. So with that, next slide, Pete. Uh, and if you want, Pete, you can just uh, actually keep going through these slides until they're fully populated when uh, we slide to them there. Uh, next slide. And then one more time, two more times. Perfect. So what is early works? So early works is uh, a term that we use in the commissioning and startup industry as work that can be completed pre before system turnover. So essentially while construction is still working on it or in this case when it's in a mod yard or a factory or a vendor shop. Um, early works uh, are checks that re don't require any form of revalidation once that pro it gets to site. So essentially when we look at early works, we don't want to touch anything that we're going to have to redo again once it gets to a site level. So if they're going to dismantle an MCC or pipe modules are going to be disassembled and then shipped to site, we're not going to do those kinds of checks because it's, it's counterintuitive to do the checks, tear it apart, and then redo them again on site. So what we're really trying to focus on is those key hours that are not going to be replicated at site. Next slide, Pete. <coughs> and there'll be a few slides that come up here, four, four boxes. So the four main things that we look at uh, when we are looking at early works is how we're going to reduce the cost here is shift premiums and overtime costs to being done in a mod yard, any travel allowance or travel costs or living out allowances, if you will, and the improved efficiencies that we see when we commission in a mod yard or a factory shop. Next slide, Pete. Awesome. Um, so I'll ask the crowd a quick question here. What do you guys think that the average cost savings is on per hour to do early works? Any, any thoughts on what, what you'd save roughly per hour? 30%. I'll convert it to a dollar value after, but I'll, I, that, that's probably pretty close actually. So let's, uh, I'll give you the exact breakdown of the numbers here. So. The first thing that we talked about was lower shift premiums. Obviously, when we're working in you know town centers or you know mod yard shops, you know we we're more likely to work that 40-hour work week rather than when we're on site and the, the standard 10, 12-hour days, seven days a week that we would see while executing on site. So our lowered overtimes costs, weekend premiums, that alone, what we've done here is we used a hypothetical hypothetical rate of $72 an hour when we did a, a charge out rate of $72. This, these numbers were put together pre-pandemic. Uh, and across these 21 projects uh, with the OT over, um, overtime premium, we've seen a cost savings of $13.50 just on the overtime premiums alone in those hours. Next slide. 
Perfect. Okay. The next thing we looked at was the, the travel premiums. So traveling people to site. So flight costs, travel allowance of driving to site, the LOA costs, whether or camp camp costs, because even if camp's provided, that's still a cost of the project. So, you know, it might not be paid to the contractor directly, but it's still being costing the project money per person staying in a camp. That that alone costs twenty one fifty an hour when we broke these costs out. Um the, one of the benefits of doing things in a fat or a mud yard is also the localized resources. So when we see jobs being done, you know, around Calgary or Nisku or, you know, Airdrie areas, you know, the, the workforce in the metropolitan areas is greater. So we have a larger workforce available in most cases to those factory mud yards and the fat testing shops. Next slide. Um, the efficiencies is the next piece that we see. And we, we have a... a, a very very detailed cost breakdown that we did on a pr recent project here in Alberta and we did as much pre-com as we could in their factory yard it was one of the the fab builders here in Calgary and the efficiencies that we've seen were actually staggering um, the biggest things that we look at is obviously like travel um, you know traveling across large sites so getting tools and equipment and personnel throughout the sites um, a lot of the efficiencies based around permitting lockout tagouts um, you know, the, the, the actual work scope being executed was much more efficient. We actually seen that that was our largest efficiency. We were actually 1.3% more efficient commissioning in the mod yard than we were at site. And that equated to $16.62 an hour. So we actually totaled in that $72 savings, we were about $51 an hour total cost savings versus adding it to the site. So at $72 commissioning in a mod yard, we were $123 on a site level for that same work being completed. So uh, pretty substantial cost savings by being able to pull your work schedule to the left. Next slide, Pete. So again, just talk, talking to this, that it actually equated to a 58% cheaper to commission in the mod yard for that pre-com work. And, and again, the, specifically, we're trying to target work that's not going to be replicated on site. So that's not going to be your entirety of the program project, but it is a large percentage that we can save that 58%, which equated to three, four to five percent of the total commissioning cost of the project. Ah, uh, next slide, Pete. Um, one more down for me, please. So just a, a little bit of a recap on that. So when we commission in, in a mod yard and we do that early works or pre-commissioning activities, we're saving on travel, LOA in most cases, uh, overtime or shift premiums in a lot of cases. We're seeing a higher efficiency of 1.3% when commissioning in a mod yard. Uh, and like they said, from this project out on 21 projects completed, $51 an hour was saved uh, across that. So now uh, one more slide, Pete. We're going to talk about how we implement this and how we put this into the schedule of the project. So how do you integrate this? So well, in a lot of cases, people, when they build their commissioning databases or the quality documents, they break their project into phases. And at SanCon, we break our projects into five phases. Phase one being our off-yard, mod-yard, and vendor site work that we can complete, essentially early works. Phase two is on-site, but prior to turnover and commissioning. Phase three is on-site after turnover from the constructor. Phase four is our dynamic or wet commissioning that we see on the project. And five is startup or performance guarantees, operational support phase of the project. Um, the, big, the big pieces here where we see this early works are our phase one and two. And, and that can be done in both mod yard and then when we get to site. Next slide. And then there'll be four, four tabs here. So step one in identifying or planning our early works, identify your commissioning process for the phases. So you might not have five, you might have four, but we need to break our project into phases. Assign your check sheets based on the phase. So at SanCon, our check sheets are broken down per check sheet into each phase. So each check sheet would have a phase associated to it. So as we progress that check sheet, each phase gets completed. And our schedule is built in a facet that it follows these stages of completion. Each check sheet has a man hour allotted to it. So we know, we call it a norm hour in our business. So when we know the normalized hour to complete a check, we can then build our schedule based on the phases. 
And then what we do is we assign the check sheet to the tags. So we know we have pressure transmitters, electrical components, mechanical rotating process, and each one of those gets its own physical check sheet and tag associated to that. Next slide, Pete. So here's an example of a, a progress report per phase. So as you can see here, we have a per discipline and per phase. So I can easily, very easily tell you per phase, per discipline, what is required to complete the checks and also track its completion level. So this is, this is vital as we're, we're progressing schedule and getting real-time reporting. So a little recap of what we covered. Again, this was pretty high level. Um, we need to break down our project into the phases. The tags of each check sheet will be assigned uh, to each component. Check sheet assigned to the phase. Check sheets have a norm hour associated to it. The norms are defined by the discipline and it's integrated into the project schedule. And that's, uh, that's the high level overview of early works. Do we have any questions about how we implement that or successes within it? What's the biggest challenge you face when trying to implement it? Um, the biggest pushback is often timeline of the constructors understanding what we're trying to do. So a lot of times it's, you know, are we going to be in the way of the construction contractors in the mod yards? And so what we, what we like to say a lot of times is, is, you know, we can put aside time before that module gets shipped. We often don't need that much time of that module before it gets shipped off site. So once construction is complete, we need a couple days essentially with each module in the mod yard and we stay out of the constructor's way, essentially not hurting their progress timeline, essentially. We're not in their way because that seems to be the biggest concern is we're going to be in the way of the construction team while we're doing our pre-com checks. Uh, there is definitely, it's, it's becoming a little bit easier to get buy-in. Uh, great question though because it, people sometimes get scared to spend money early, right? People under, all often think that commissioning doesn't need to come in until the last month of the project, which is, act, which is actually the worst thing you can do for a project is not bring your commissioning and your team in, in early, right? So we, we want to have that team in there as early as possible. It can be a small team, you know, a really minimalistic team and, and especially when it comes to mod yard or vendor shop work, your team is one, two, three people max in most cases. So you can come in very efficient and effective with a very small team. And that cost over on a pulling that schedule to the left has immense effects on overall project timeline and costs. So. It's not so much from, no, no, it's, oh, well, I mean, it definitely can happen, but operations rarely wants to be in the mod yard. I mean, they want to witness fat testing and we, all, we always invite operations to witness or be a part of the team. And, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if Sancon is the, the tech company providing the resources on the ground. If operations wants to be that group, we just want to track that progress so that job gets done once in the mod yard, whether it's operations doing the work or, you know, Sancon or a different vendor at all. So. We're creating a work collaborative environment, exactly. I heard that from Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have a system in place for maintaining the integrity of a already commissioned piece of equipment or piping like that or We we do. So what we do is we use this, the software that I previewed earlier was the completion system called Sancon Completion System. It's built by a company called Arbiter. And what that software does is it, it retains all the quality checks. And what, what has to happen here is, you know, like I said, we don't want to do anything that's going to be ripped apart at site. So if we have any concerns that integrity of the system is going to be fouled with, we have to do terminations in junction boxes, we're ripping transmitters off for shipment. We don't want to do those checks because we're essentially having to repeat it. If, if those transmitters have been pulled out of service, it, it defeats the, the purpose of what was done in the mod yard. Any other questions? Thank you.